Travel alert, using the unlocked door, you travel southwest, taking a few moments to arrive. Travel alert, using the unlocked door, you travel southeast, taking a few moments to arrive, this obvious kitchen appears rather well equipped, a variety of foodstuffs dominating the area. However, none of it is edible, all of the food has spoiled and turned moldy, the overall sight rather disgusting. Worse, the chamber now appears overrun by vermin, ordinary mice, roaches, spiders, and other creepy crawlies having their way within. Despite a rather thorough search, you find absolutely nothing of value here, all is as it seems. You do, however, find a secret door to the east. What is apparent here is that the kitchen was being used to prepare a rather large meal, and then the chefs and cooking staff apparently just walked away. Again, none of the food is remotely editable anymore, but much of it lies out as if it were being prepared and then was strangely abandoned. The cook staff must have been serving everyone back in the great hall when the onyx seal shard fell, Kartha ponders, thinking out loud. They likely never knew what hit them. Half expecting some monster to suddenly appear and attack, nothing more occurs within the kitchen, prompting you to continue your investigation of the manor. While the kitchen stinks and is crawling with ordinary vermin, it is relatively empty and not a threat. You can exit through the secret door to the east or return to the great hall through the door to the west. Barthol has a 35% chance of picking the lock and rolls a 57 on percentile dice. Failure, your heroes bash open the cabinet, destroying the locking mechanism and making its contents available. However, your act of vandalism may have destroyed some Ariana nods and takes everything from within the immediate area. Travel alert, using the secret door, you travel east, taking a few moments to arrive, entering through the secret door, you find a small but modestly equipped library, the walls lined with shelves containing all manner of books, tomes, and parchments. While you will need to search the library to learn more, it does appear that most of the materials here are rotten and moldy, not unlike the kitchen to the west. Something has putrefied these books throughout the chamber, each time you try to handle one, it merely crumbles in your hands and falls to the floor as so much ash. Baron Renwald was fascinated by the arcane, Sainadiers begins, continuing to survey the rotting materials here. He actually became a low-level magic user I believe, not to be an adventurer but to simply learn all he could about magic. This library here does not surprise me at all. And what's this? Ariana points and asks. Resting on a small table is a glittering crystal ball, an intriguing find within this strange place. Seemingly crafted from transparent quartz and smoothed to perfection, this crystalline sphere is almost a foot in diameter and presently sits upon a small metal stand atop a white cloth material. The object looks quite interesting. Carefully looking the crystal ball over, you eye a small crack in it near the top and at first you assume it is no longer magical. As you put your hand near the object, however, it begins to glow with a slight reddish color, the closer you come to the crystal ball, the redder it becomes. You then suddenly feel compelled to touch it, a strong desire that seems to almost overwhelm you. Janet, let's do a wisdom check on your hero to see if you can resist the sudden urge to touch the sphere. Needing a 14 or less from Janet, a 10 was rolled. Success, while the compulsion to touch the crystal ball is quite strong, you summon enough willpower to retract your hand from the object and avoid touching it. Something tells you that you just saved yourself from something unpleasant, 
and you warn the rest of the party to stay away from the sphere. The strange encounter with the crystal ball over, you can exit via the secret door to the north or the secret door to the west. Barthol has a 35% chance of picking the lock and rolls a 29 on percentile dice. Success. The desk is unlocked and now easily opened. Unfortunately, the desk has nothing of value. Travel alert, using the secret door, you travel north, taking a few moments to arrive, moving past the secret door in the wall, you step into the ground floor of what appears to be a tower above, a wooden staircase standing in the northeastern corner and rising up into darkness. Immediately, however, you're nearly choked by an extremely foul stench, the familiar reek of humanoid wastes, and you're not sure you want to even be here. The party looks around, each of you holding some sort of cloth or handkerchief to your nose to keep the rotting smell at bay. It does not take long for you to recognize that you've found a private commode, with several wooden structures used to go to the bathroom against the northern wall and some crude piping to allow fresh water to descend from a large tub above. You further notice that the floor is made of narrow wooden slats so that it can be easily rinsed down. Through the slats, you can tell that there is some sort of liquid below perhaps three or four feet from the floor. However, you will need to search the floor directly to learn more. You direct some light down into the liquid beneath the floor, revealing what appears to be a massive pit full of human wastes, awful from the kitchen and other disgusting substances you don't want to know about. You certainly wouldn't want to fall in. What's that? Ariana asks, pointing in a particular direction below. From what you can see, there appears to be something golden in the sludge, just a few inches tall but shiny in the light. The item definitely appears intriguing, but trying to retrieve it would be equally as dangerous, what do you want to do, choose an option, leave the golden item where it is, attempt to retrieve the golden item? Quickly formulating a plan, you first find a way to open the flooring and then ask the party to lower you down so you can grab the golden item yourself, as nobody in the party wants to risk falling in themselves. As you're lowered down to just above the surface of the horrific liquid, you carefully reach down to grab the item stuck within the septic sludge. Pulling it up, it becomes clear that the item is much larger than you anticipated. Worse, it's stuck, the liquid acting as a sort of glue and preventing easy retrieval of the item. As you pull harder to retrieve the item from the liquid, you will need to try a dexterity check to see what happens next. Needing a 14 or less from Janet, a 4 was rolled. Success, it's not easy, but slowly you're able to extract what appears to be a golden staff from the sludge, and quickly you have your party haul you back up and away from the danger. While the golden color appears to merely be paint, there is a slight glow to the staff, it's likely magical. Worse, some of the liquid waste you've brought back up to the floor begins to wiggle, and before you can do anything about it, about a dozen rot grubs squirm their way toward you and attack. Your party is under attack. Menacing your entire party are 12 rot grubs. It's Redfern's turn. What do you want him to do? Redfern readies his quarter staff plus one and swings at rot grub number one, needing a 10 to hit. Die roll is a 10, plus three to hit, as Win readies his short sword plus one and swings at rot grub number two, needing a 10 to hit. Die roll is a 19, plus five to hit, as Kartha readies her quarter staff plus one and swings at rot grub number three, needing a 10 to hit. Die rot grub number four attacks Ariana with its bite needing a 19 to hit. Die roll is a five, it's Ariana's turn. What do you want her to do? Ariana readies her short sword plus one and swings at rot grub number four, needing a 10 to hit. Die roll is a 15, plus four to hit, Rot grub number 11 attacks S win with its bite needing a 17 to hit. Die roll is, it's C Nyers's turn. What do you want him to do? Sainayers readies his quarter staff plus one and swings at rot grub number five, needing a 10 to hit. Rot grub number 10 attacks Janet with its bite needing a, it's Janet's turn. 
What do you want her to do? Janet readies her mace plus one and swings at rot grub number 10, needing a 10 to hit. Di Barthol readies his short sword plus one and swings at rot grub number six. Rot grub number eight attacks Janet with its bite needing a 17 to hit. Die roll is a 20 which is an automatic hit and does double damage. Rot grub number eight hits Janet, burrowing deeper into her, doing an additional four points of damage. Rot grub number eight further damages Janet, biting her for two points of damage and leaving Janet with eight hit points. Also, the monster has attached itself to Janet and will automatically hit now with each subsequent round until defeated. GM note, a new combat round has begun. Initiative is rolled, with higher, Barth readies his short sword plus one and swings at rot grub number seven, needing a t Ariana readies her short sword plus one and swings at rot grub number 12, needing a 10 to hit. Die roll is a 17, plus four to hit, Ariana hits rot grub number 12, doing three points of damage and defeating it. Rot grub number eight attacks Janet with its bite and automatically hits, burrowing deeper into her, doing an additional three points of damage and leaving Janet with five hit points. It's Janet's turn. What do you want her to do? Janet readies her mace plus one and swings at rot grub number eight, needing a 10 to hit. Die S. Wynn readies his short sword plus one and swings at rot grub number 11, needing a 10 to hit. Cartha readies her quarter staff plus one and swings at rot grub number nine, needing a 10 to hit. Die roll is a 16, plus four to hit. Cartha hits rot grub number nine, doing four points of damage and defeating it. Well done. All combatants have been defeated, ending the battle. Each hero receives 43 experience points. The grubs are defeated and you push them back into the septic sludge below, closing the floor grate again and glad to be done with it all. Indeed, Sainayer speaks for the party by stating that some places are just best left alone. While the chamber here continues to reek, it's not any sort of threat. You can either ascend the stairway to the second floor or go back through one of the secret doors in the western or southern walls. Travel alert, using the stairway, you travel up, taking a minute to arrive, climbing the stairway, you reach the second floor of the tower, its floor made of wood and the stairway continuing to a third level. Looking about, you see a solid oak table near the center of the floor, a couple of odd stargazing instruments lying on the table mixed in with other books, papers, and such. Nearby, several open windows allow easy access to the night sky, a faded yellow star map of the heavens tacked alongside one of the windows. Unfortunately, there does not seem to be much else to examine or do here. The modest wooden table here is about six feet in length and presently covered with a faded white sheet. Finding a small cabinet to the left of the table, you extract a long, metallic tubular device with glassy ends that you've never seen before. What is that? Redfern begins, curious. At first nobody seems to know. Ariana then takes the item from you, holds the smaller end to one eye while pointing the slightly larger end through a nearby window and pauses a moment, the behavior rather strange. It's a telescope. The fighter continues, still peering through the piece of unwelcome technology. It makes things far away seem much closer. Anyone want to give it a try?
Ariana turns back to you and holds the device out, waiting for someone to take it. You hold something Techniki, Sainadiers responds, stating what everyone else was thinking. It should be destroyed, now. Reaching for the device, Kartha blocks the Sisland from taking the telescope, her anger returning again. Oh yes, anything you Sislands can't understand is evil and forbidden, isn't it? Kartha criticizes. This is science, and it's not your enemy. You don't want to argue, how do you react, choose an option, diplomacy, let's agree to disagree, dogma, Sisla teaches that Techniki is evil, reason, inanimate objects can't be evil. The reason score for Janet remains the same, taking the side of both Ariana as well as Kartha, you agree that a simple, inanimate device like this telescope can't possibly be something evil, wrong, or even dangerous. Rather, it's just a sophisticated thing born of science and nothing to worry about. Still, you ask Ariana to put the telescope back where she found it so it does not potentially offend anyone else in the party. The floor fully explored, it's time to move on, you can either ascend the tower to the third level or go back down to the ground floor from here. Barthol has a 35% chance of picking the lock and rolls a 51 on percentile dice. Your heroes bash open the desk, destroying the locking mechanism and making its contents available. However, your act of vandalism may have destroyed. Janet casts cure light wounds on herself, healing her for 4 hit points. Kartha casts Cure Light Wounds on Ariana, healing her for 6 hit points. Sainadiers casts Cure Light Wounds on Janet, healing her for 6 hit points. GM Alert, Disease is no longer affecting Kartha, your party rests and recovers for 8 hours. Wounds are tended. Spells are memorized and your heroes are refreshed and re-energized. Travel alert, using the stairway, you travel up, taking a minute to arrive. As you reach the third floor and look about, you find what can only be a modest alchemical laboratory, dozens of glass-based items, containers, and such standing in various positions throughout the room. You also spot a large, obvious birdcage standing within the very center of the chamber, perhaps six feet in height, several strange creatures appearing perched within. As you approach, let's do a party dexterity check to see whether you were quiet enough to not disturb the creatures within the cage. Needing a 13 or less from your heroes, a 3 was rolled. Success. Yes, the party has yet to disturb half a dozen or so larger, bat-like creatures perched quietly within the cage. That's good, because otherwise they would have started squawking like crazy and making a lot of noise. Having not disturbed the creatures in the cage, you could continue to quietly progress upward to the next floor, bypassing the laboratory here altogether. Alternatively, you could investigate the room and the cage, which will likely cause the bat-like creatures to make quite a fuss and perhaps even attack. What would you like to do? Choose an option, continue up to the fourth floor, stay and further investigate. Sensing that it may be best to keep things quiet and just continue, you motion for the party to continue upward. Climbing the stairs to the final tower floor here, you quickly feel heat, thick, heavy heat that is surprising and uncomfortable. The floor itself appears to be some sort of storage area, with a diversity of boxes, chests, shelving and other containers lying all about in orderly fashion. However, it's hard to see throughout the room, as parts of the ceiling have actually started to collapse, hiding certain spots of the chamber from view. You then notice movement from the far end of the tower floor, obscured but movement nonetheless. Keeping as quiet as possible, you scan the immediate area and explore a few of the nearer containers, this place is definitely some sort of storage area, and exploring it thoroughly would likely take hours. 
I think someone is searching for something, Redfern keenly observes, pointing toward the far corner but your sight still obstructed. How should we approach? Still perhaps 30 feet away, it does seem like something humanoid is rummaging through the various containers, it's back to you and likely unaware of your presence. Hence, you have surprise, what would you like to do, choose an option, politely inquire from the person beyond, sneak as close as possible and attack, sneak as close as possible but just observe. Janet permanently increases her curiosity score by one point, wanting to get closer but not yet attack, you instruct your party to close in on the humanoid from behind. Before you get too far, however, the being stops what it's doing, turns and faces you. And what do we have here, then? A deep, hideous voice projects. Out of the shadows a monstrous humanoid creature appears. Standing some eight feet tall and possessing two curved horns on his head, the being appears demonic with thick gray hides of leather-like scales and small, thorny spikes protruding from the crevices. This monster is the obvious source of heat within the chamber, and its eyes glow a malevolent red as it looks you over as if mere toys to play with. Another infernal, Kartha whispers into your ear, her voice cracking from fear. Before we continue, Let's do a party curiosity check to see if anyone notices anything more. Needing a 11 or less from your heroes, a 4 was rolled. Success, this, creature, looks familiar, Sainadiers whispers, also quite fearful. I believe we've found Baron Renwald, or what he's been transformed into. What do you think of my new, body? The devil asks, grinning with conceit. It suits me. You were Baron Renwald. Sainadiers replies, playing his hunch. What happened here, to you and everyone else? Why, I have been reborn. The monster returns, readying a wicked blade. We all have. Now, feel my wrath. Your party is under attack. Eyeing the entire party are one spine devil and two imps. It's Janet's turn. What do you want her to do? Janet casts cause light wounds on imp number 1, nearly wounding it, needing a 14 or greater, imp number 1 rolls a 15 and saves for no damage versus spells. It's Ariana's turn. What do you want her to do? Ariana readies her short sword plus 1 and swings at imp number 2, needing a 16 to hit. Die Redfern casts magic missile on imp number 2, striking it with a magic missile for 3 points of damage. Imp number 2 has been defeated. It's Kartha's turn. What do you want her to do? Kartha readies her quarter staff plus 1 and swings at imp number 1, needing a 16 to hit. Die roll is a 17, plus 4 to hit, Kartha hits imp number 1, doing 5 points of damage and leaving it with 2 hit points. Spine Devil attacks Ariana with its bite needing a 19 to hit. Die. It's C. Nyers' turn. What do you want him to do? Sainadiers readies his quarter staff plus 1 and swings at imp number 1, needing a 16 to hit, needing a 30 or less on percentile dice, a 100 is rolled. Failure. Arthal tries to blend into the chat, it's S. Wind's turn. What do you want him to do? GM note, a new combat round has begun. Initiative is rolled. Redfern casts magic missile on imp number 1 striking it with a magic missile for 5 points of damage. Imp number 1 has been defeated. It's Barthal's turn. What do you, needing a 30 or less on percentile dice, a 82 is rolled. Failure. Barthal tries to blend into the shadows but is unsick. Sainadiers readies his quarter staff plus 1 and swings at Spine Devil, needing a 19 to hit. Die roll is a 18, plus 4 to hit, Sainadiers hits Spine Devil, doing 7 points of damage and leaving it with 40 hit points. Ariana readies her short sword plus 1 and swings at Spine Devil, needing a 19 to hit. 
Eswin readies his short sword plus one and swings at Spine Devil, needing a 19 to hit. Die roll is a 16, plus 5 to hit, Eswin hits Spine Devil, doing 6 points of damage and leaving it with 29 hit points. Spine Devil attacks Ariana with its bite needing a 19 to hit. Die roll is a 11, plus 8 to hit, Spine Devil hits Ariana, incapacitating her, needing a 8 or greater, Ariana rolls a 6 and fails versus Death Ray or Poison. Spine Devil further damages Ariana, biting her for 3 points of damage and defeating Ariana. Spine Devil again attacks Ariana with its sword, it's Janet's turn. What do you want her to do? Janet uses a skeletal seed on Spine Devil, causing the monstrous hero to attack it for 6 points of damage for 10 minutes. It's Karthus' turn. What do you want her to do? GM Note, a new combat round has begun. Initiative is rolled, with higher value, Barthol binds the wounds of Ariana, returning her hit points to zero and stopping her bleeding. It's Eswin, Eswin readies his short sword plus one and swings at Spine Devil, needing a 19 to hit. Die roll is a 17, plus 5 to hit, Eswin hits Spine Devil, doing 8 points of damage and leaving it with 15 hit points. It's Janet summoned on Dead's turn. What do you want it to do? Janet directs her summoned on Dead at Spine Devil, causing the monstrous hero to attack it for 3 points of damage and leaving it with 12 hit points. It's Janet's turn. What do you want her to do? Janet casts Cure Light Wounds on Ariana, healing her for 8 hit points. It's Redfern's turn. What do you want him to do? Redfern readies his Golden Quarter Staff plus 1 and swings at Spine Devil, needing a 19. Sainadius readies his Quarter Staff plus 1 and swings at Spine Devil, needing a 9. Kartha readies her Quarter Staff plus 1 and swings at Spine Devil, needing a 19 to hit. Die Roll is a 1 which is an automatic miss, Kartha misses Spine Devil. Sp GM Note. A new combat round has begun. Initiative is rolled, Eswin readies his short sword plus one and swings at Spine Devil, needing a 19 to hit. Die roll is a 11, plus 5 to hit, Eswin misses Spine Devil. Spine Devil attacks Eswin with its bite needing a 17 to hit. Die roll is a 15, plus 8 to hit, Spine Devil hits Eswin, nearly incapacitating him, needing a 8 or greater, Eswin rolls a 13 and saves for no damage versus death ray or poison. It's Janet's turn. What do you want her to do? Janet readies her mace plus one and swings at Spine Devil, needing a 19 to hit. Die roll is a 18, plus four to hit, Janet hits Spine Devil. Redfern binds the wounds of Ariana, returning her hit points to zero and stopping her bleeding. It's C. Nyers' turn. Sainayers readies his quarter staff plus one and swings at Spine Devil, needing a 19 to hit. Barthol readies his short sword plus one and swings at Spine Devil, needing a 19 to hit. Die roll is a 3, Janet directs her summoned undead at Spine Devil, causing the monstrous hero to attack it for 6 points of damage and defeating it. Well done. All combatants have been defeated, ending the battle. Each hero receives 171 experience points. Janet has gained a new energy level and receives 5 new hit points and 1 new spell, click the spells button to assign the new spell. Redfern has gained a new energy level and receives 5 new hit points and 1 new spell, click the spells button to assign the new spell. Sainadius has gained a new energy level and receives 8 new hit points and 1 new spell, click the spells button to assign the new spell. Incredible surprise etched into the eyes of the horned devil at actually having been defeated, the creature buckles and shakes as it expires, the sight ghastly and one you will never forget.
Moments later, actual steam begins to rise from the hellion's body, and slowly it reverts back into a tall, nearly naked man, someone Sainadius recognizes. Baron Renwald. Once a kind, strong, brave hero, an outside power had literally turned him into a monster, everything the Baron had reviled while human. Sainadius bows his head in sorrow, fully recognizing that there is little more that can be done for him, and Redfern places his hand upon the right shoulder of St. Adiers, attempting to comfort him. Now that Baron Renwald has been found and there are no other dangers facing you here, you're free to fully explore the tower level and see what you can find. GM Note, your quest log has been updated. Click the quests button for all the details, you soon open all of the unlocked containers within the tower floor, finding only personal garments, souvenirs, and other items belonging to the Baron and his wife, clearly this is where they kept most of their important keepsakes and belongings. Unfortunately, none of the things you've found are worth anything, and you wouldn't feel right taking these belongings anyway. However, there is still what appears to be a modest treasure chest at the back of the room to examine, the same one the spine devil was about to open when you encountered him. A quick search finds that the corpse has one wand of phantasmal force, one ring of protection plus two, one skeleton, object key, one scroll of magic missile, one scroll of floating disc, one scroll of mirror image, one scroll of permanent light, and one longsword plus one. Eswin nods and takes the longsword plus one. Redfern nods and takes everything from within the immediate area. Opening the chest, you find, well, a great deal of treasure. Inside are hundreds of coins, gems, jewelry and even a few potions, enough to take care of the entire party for some time. It is quite the haul, and at first all of you are in awe of the treasure lying here. Unaccustomed to such wealth, Eswin pushes the chest over, allowing its contents to spill out across the floor. As your party members begin to sift through it all, St. Adiers shakes his head in disagreement, clearly not comfortable about something. Don't take any of it. The Sislan warns, eyeing each of you rather strangely. None of this belongs to us, it now belongs to the Baron's only daughter back in Kathleen. Please, don't help yourself to a single copper coin. Well, that's a huge disappointment, all this treasure and you're not supposed to take any of it? Janet, how do you want to deal with this? Choose an option, argue with St. Adiers to take some of it, comply with St. Adiers and leave all of it, ignore St. Adiers and just take all of it? The party's reputation score permanently increases by 3 points. GM Note, 
your quest log has been updated. Click the quests button for all the details, recognizing that St. Aetius is completely right and that all the treasure here belongs to the Baron's daughter, you instruct the party to leave all the wealth where it is and not take any of it. There is a lot of wealth here, it's hard to pass it up. But you do feel that you're doing the right thing, which will improve your party's overall reputation. Wait a moment, Janet, Ariana calls out, bent over the treasure chest itself and gently knocking on various surfaces of the chest, listening intently. After a few more knocks, Ariana locates what appears to be a false bottom in the chest. Using a dagger to pry the false bottom loose, Ariana then finds an old burlap sack lying within a tiny space between the false bottom and the actual bottom of the chest, the clever elf extracts the sack and hands it to you, everyone quite surprised by the find. GM note, your quest log has been updated. Click the quests button for all the details, well done, Ariana, Redfern begins, recognizing the magical object for what it is. You've found the bag of holding the Dryad sent us to recover. Which we need to return to Luasia now. Cartha reminds the party, almost in a panic. Hurry, there is no time to lose. Well, Janet, that's about all you can do here. Your only real recourse now is to descend the stairway and go back down. Kartha casts Cure Light Wounds on Ariana, healing her. St. Aetius casts Cure Light Wounds on Ariana, healing her for 7 hit points. Travel Alert, returning to the Grove of Trees, you take 15 minutes to arrive, the bag of holding already in your possession, go ahead and offer it to Luasia. Janet offers uses the bag of holding and loses it from her inventory. Astonished that you've actually recovered the bag of holding, Luasia takes it from you so she can properly dispose of the onyx seal shard once you've extracted it. She then quickly escorts your party north again, arriving at the location of the shard minutes later. Someone will need to very carefully extract the object and drop it into the bag, Luasia continues, the entire party now standing just a few feet from the glowing thing. It's quite poisonous to the touch. Let me try, Ariana volunteers, retrieving a simple dagger with which to pry the object up and out of the soil here. My hands are likely the steadiest here. Luasia agrees and prepares the bag of holding as Ariana carefully positions herself alongside the glowing object, its light nearly blinding her. Let's have Ariana try a dexterity check and see whether she's able to pry the object out safely or not. Needing a 17 or less from Ariana, a 2 was rolled. Success, after several nail-biting moments, Ariana manages to free the object from the soil around it, then utilizes her dagger to flip the thing up and into the bag of holding. She's done it. All at once, the darkness and disease and death that had flooded the manor and the local area fade away, nothing is immediately restored of course, but at least the local vegetation will be able to grow back now with time. Your heroes help Ariana back up, then make your way back to the Dryad's beloved oak tree. As you return, Luasia smiles as her all but dead tree is saved, already starting to recover. Congratulations, you've saved Luasia from a horrible fate, and while the Baron and his entire extended family were all slain, at least you know what happened. Unable to repay your bravery, kindness, and altruism in any other way, the Dryad instead delivers a gentle kiss to each of your heroes before turning back for her tree again, about to depart. The party's reputation score permanently increases by one point, I shall dream of all of you as I sleep now, and how your noble strength and valor not only saved me but my beloved grove. Go in peace, my dearest friends, and do not think lightly of the great thing you have done here today.
I shall forever value our chance meeting. While you'd really enjoy some more time with the Dryad, she is still close to death and you know in your heart that it's best to let her depart. The fake creature smiles again, then slips back into her dominating oak tree, itself beginning to spring back to life thanks to you and your fellow heroes. GM Note, your quest log has been updated. Click the quests button for all the details, again, well done. That concludes this little side adventure. Let's reward the entire party with some bonus experience points. Each hero earns 571 experience points. The grove slowly starting to heal again, there is nothing left for the party to do here, it's time to move on. GM note, it's dark here. Click the use item button to select a source of light, your party rests and recovers for 8 hours. Wounds are tended, spells are memorized and your heroes are refreshed and re-energized. Janet casts cure light wounds on Ariana, healing her for 5 hit points. Your party rests and recovers for 8 hours. Wounds are tended, spells are memorized and your heroes are refreshed and re-energized. Travel alert, returning to the road north toward Manor, you take a half hour to arrive, with the infernals destroyed, the evil, oppressive atmosphere here in the road is totally gone and life can now return to normal. It's another 3 miles south back to the main road, but you can now leave the manor with the mystery of its dying vegetation solved. Travel alert, using the road, you travel south, taking an hour to arrive, and that's a wrap for module number 3, Visions of Apocalypse. Time to move on. Returning to the main road leading east and then north to Nace, you're ready now to continue to Nace as the inner circle wizard Vel had requested back in Kathleen. Before you begin the next module, please consider making a small donation to the developers of Browser Quests, the Huelsman Way LLC. Each module takes us months to develop, all the while needing to host, moderate and improve the game. Just $1 per module would be fantastic, and very much appreciated. Thank you.